Good evening, everyone. Um, my name is Irina Vruska. I'm a, a consultant in the restaurant industry. Um, I've been in the in this industry for almost 15 years. And the last six years I have been doing consultancy and we delivered over 200 projects. But today I'm going to share with you um, a case a case from uh, my previous um, full-time job experience where I used to be a brand director of TJ Fridays in Russia and Eastern Europe um, in 2013 and 14. And as you may um, remember, they, these years have been um, also quite, um, quite stressful years and the economy was tough. Um, it was one of the crises again. So uh, this is a case about many engineering practice that we have applied and how we um, actually managed not just to hold the food cost, but even to decrease the food cost in the struggling economy when the, the prices, the, the purchasing prices were actually going up. Can we move one slide down, please? Yeah. A couple of words about myself. Um, I'm a founder of uh, uh, Like for Like for Service Consultancy, used to be brand director for TJ Fridays and Costa Coffee. Um, used to be marketing and strategy director for Papa John's, uh, Russia and CIS. I'm also the head of marketing classes at Novikov Business School, and I also own my own small restaurant. Um, if not this crisis, um, there would have already been three restaurants under the same brand, Pasta Teca, but so far there's just one, and we just had to hold and uh, we couldn't finish the other the other two, and they're just you know standing there almost ready to open, but they're closed. So, um, I'm also have a, a book if you're interested. It's available in English, but also the guest. Um, it's about restaurant marketing. It has also some practices on menu engineering that I'm gonna um, talk about right now. So, let's move forward to um, to the to the case. Um, in March 2014, I was the brand director of um, TJ Fridays uh, in Russia and Eastern Europe, but this particular case is about the Russian experience. Um, and we have encountered quite a lot of um, pressure on the food cost, pressure on purchasing prices. The steak and pork price increased 5 um, to 20%. Uh, because of the economic crisis and the the uh, the, the fall the fall of um, ruble, um, salmon price increased a lot. Um, the spirits um, increased uh, ten percent very rapidly. Uh, mozzarella increased fifteen percent. Those are the key ingredients in the Friday's menu mix, and these would have affected the um, the. Um, the food cost of the menu massively but we have taken some actions and these actions have actually led to decreasing the food cost and I'm gonna tell talk through uh, some of these actions to you uh, right now can you move to the next slide please yeah so what we have done our goal was to keep the quality of the menu as um, you know as much as we could we didn't want to cut the menu a lot we didn't want to let our customer see that the menu has been you know has been reduced we didn't want to lower the quality that was a very very important case but we need to take several actions uh, in order to keep the menu solid but to help ourselves um, improve the, the economics. So what we did, we just took nine high food cost dog items, um, one of which include one of which includes salmon. And if you're familiar with, with, with a method called star dog analysis, then you would know the dog is not an animal, dog is um, is a low selling um, low margin um, menu item. So we just took off nine of uh, menu items of the menu. And uh, we also took two um, high 
food cost soup items that were also um, quite you know tough on, on, on the food cost but they were not dogs but they were not uh, you know bringing any money so we also brought in some um, some uh, new dishes um, and you can see that we took 11 dishes out um, and we brought um, eight dishes in so pretty much we we kept the, the the number of the dishes almost the same we changed um recipe on two dishes with salmon and that was a very interesting trick because you know that uh, our audience really liked salmon everything with salmon everything with seafood everything with uh, fish would sell very well so our what our struggle was that we you know we had a pasta with salmon that was selling really well but how we we just couldn't keep on selling it at all we we would have need to increase the price too much to keep it on the menu so what we did instead we replaced salmon with some of the uh some of the white fish and some of the um um seafood mix which all together looked and felt very um interesting we call it a pasta with seafood which you know comparing the, the names the pasta with salmon and pasta with seafood pasta with seafood even even sounds better but it was actually lower food cost we changed the layout of the menu uh, we had different number of, of pictures on the menu we changed the design to um, um, to help our uh, marginal items sell better we adjusted prices on nine items and that's very interesting because we did not alter or i mean higher the price uh, on those items we actually lowered a couple of prices not just to higher the price but lowering some of the prices helped us move the focus of the guest to other menu items and help sell a more profitable menu items so menu engineering and, and you know helping your food cost balance is not always increasing the price on some items but sometimes is decreasing because menu engineering is about um psychological um um the way that the, the way that your guest is is psychologically um accepting and understanding the menu and you know people don't really read the menu they just scan it so menu engineering is is an action that helps your customers scan the menu the way that he wants to buy the more profitable the more marginal items what we also did we in reduced um the sauce cups uh for those of you who are familiar with TJ Friday's menu and um, and the product, you may uh, have seen that they have like these um, small sauce cups on the side of a steak, on the side of, of a fish dish, on on the side of, of many dishes. And we reduced; they were pretty big, the 45 ml. We reduced to 30 ml, which honestly not a single customer has noticed because it's still quite a big amount of sauce so think about also think about some of the um, um additions some of the extras that you have on your dishes maybe people are not using all of it and you can um you can safely decrease the amount we also made a substitute on the side, side dishes and so before, for example, all the burgers or, or steaks were coming with um, potato fries, fried potatoes. Uh, fried, fried potatoes were actually higher in food cost than certain alternative side dishes that we could offer to the client. So we invented three or four alternative side dishes that the client could substitute their fries for. So by giving them more choice we actually helped ourselves to lower the food cost we reconsidered the portion portion size and i'm very happy that it only touched uh, one item that we had to reduce the portion size and we realized it was actually too big and there was one also one trick which was the vat optimization 
it's a Russian specific issue. Um, so I'm not going to be, you know, talking a lot about it, but there, you know, there may be something in, in, um, in your, um, um, in your country that, that that's also, you know, um, um, a taxation issue that may theoretically help you um, reduce your cost. Can we move to the sec next slide, please? So, um, of the new items, I, and I wanna, you know, point it out um, very particularly that you, when you remove some of the items that are, you know, hurting your your food cost, you will also need to bring in new items. And the the thing that the logic behind it that any new items you put on your menu while re-engineering it right now, try to make the food cost as low as possible. And certainly the food cost of the item that you're bringing in should be considerably lower than the average of its own category. So on this slide, you can see that the, um, um, the food cost, if you compare this slide and you're gonna have this presentation with the next slide, you're gonna see that the food cost of the items is considerably lower than the, those, um, those of, the, of the categories that they belong to. So the impact was actually very, very interesting. So even though, as I told you, that the, the purchasing prices were actually going up, we managed to go 1.7 um, and it's, you know, on the left, um, uh, right bottom corner, um, the, uh, the food cost impact was 1.7 percentage points decrease by taking all these actions. And you can see the breakdown on the categories, how it actually happened throughout the categories and you can see on the right hand side the breakdown on how each action actually impacted the food cost. What we have uh, done with engineering 0.4%, with pricing 0.4%, with the sauce cup size also 0.4%. And I really want to point it, point it out that there is a, a lot of work behind the, the, the job that yeah, I just you know, uh, told you through, but, and, and there's very small uh, impacts on individual actions you take, really, really small, like zero point something percent, but then it adds up and it all brings you almost 2% of, um, of your food cost improvement. And that's a lot, as you can Imagine, especially if you have several restaurants. So it, it is a it is a it is a, a work of tiny little improvements, and this has taken us about two months to figure out exactly how to um, put all this thing together to make it work. Next slide, please. So. A step by step, um, the actions that we have taken and the actions that you can take um, to improve your 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 menu um, and the food cost when you know the purchasing price is going um, up and the purchasing power of your guests is going down. First of all, analyze your sales, and you can uh, use two methods of sales analysis. Those are ABC um, analysis and star dog analysis that I um, I was talking um, about late in earlier. Um, these all will help you to understand your champions, the dishes that you want to just promote and promote, and the losers, the dishes that you need, you know, to either. Um, take out of the menu or you, you, you need to substitute them or, or to change the recipe. Second point, which is very important and, and not every restaurant in a crisis does so, identify your critical ingredients because there will be, of course, some of the ingredients that will raise in price more than others and also some of the ingredients that will impact your food cost more than others. Um, for example, if you have cheese in 10 dishes out of 40, means that the cheese will impact um, your food cost a lot. And then 
if you have let's say mushroom in three dishes and it can be easily substituted by something else is not a critical ingredient for you so think about the critical ingredients not from the perspective of today where you are and what the pricing for those ingredients is today but a little bit you know thinking forward what can happen with those suppliers with those ingredients call your suppliers ask what they expect what the ingredients they expect to grow in price or to disappear from the market because you really want to get prepared for that the point three is to eliminate your low sellers uh, with critical ingredients that's for sure you know if you compare those two lists from first point and from the second your low sellers with critical ingredients that's and no no you just eliminate that the ones you know that the ones that um, the ingredients that are likely to increase in cost or disappear you just don't want them in your system as much as possible try to replace the, ingre uh, the critical ingredients um, with something that you know is a good substitute um, or maybe create alternative dishes you know you, you if if a meat um, mm, I don't know a meat um, dish has something critical in it you can just turn it into a different also valuable also good uh, but a different dish is better to create a new dish than to um, take some of the ingredients out and make the dish look and feel um, worse or poorer it's, it's really better to recreate and reimagine your menu and, and create something new instead of you know um making your portion smaller or or uh or taking some ingredients out um next step is to reconsider your portion size um reconsider extras sauces really think through of what you can um make a little bit smaller or you know some of the some of the things that may not be necessary as a free addition to your to your dish really think through talk to your guests as well do they understand the value of those extras and how you can uh, work it out then develop high margin new items that's that's a you know a very critical point you don't just remove the items the old ones but you have to develop really high margin interesting attractive um, good looking new items then point seven review the pricing update the prices on 15 to 20 percent of your menu do not update the price on all of your menu right away because it really scares your customer it's really you know something that um that that is not expected um and and do it steadily and slowly but 15 to 20 percent of the menu when you update and not necessarily increase but maybe sometimes even decrease the prices is the way to go and um of course, if you want to change your sales mix and you want to sell more of the uh, profitable, um, high margin, um, um, high margin items, you need to rethink your menu layout um, and design that will help you emphasize on the items that you really want to sell. So on the pictures, highlighted on the on the key visible parts of your menu you just want the dishes that are the best sellers that are yeah, the, the champions that bring you more money and you want people to really focus on buying as many of those as possible so those are um, some of my um some of my advice of course right now at the time of lockdown there is no you know not all of these actions you can take and not all of these steps you can take um to um to do re rethink your menu right now but you gotta start now in order to um come back and open your doors in a month or two we don't know where open your doors prepared and um with a better 
and a more profitable menu than the one you had. Thank you so much. You have my um, you have my contacts, so I'm always uh, online, always happy to help and uh, um, answer your questions. And do we have questions on the chat? Yeah, so so we have a lot of messages. Uh, okay. Yeah, so thank you guys for your uh, chats. Uh, I understand that you want to move forward as soon as possible to <laughs> aggregators topic, but why I decided to put uh, Irina's topic on the table? Uh, you posted a lot of mathematics about uh, discounts and aggregators commissions, and uh, in some of calculations it was mentioned uh, the put cost of around uh, 40 percent. And uh, I just wanted to show you that even uh, fine dining brands uh, like Fridays work work on 20, 23 persons of food cost. It is first thing. And second thing, if we are going to discuss some discounts, it will be very hard, you know, when you are discussing discounts, having 40 persons of food cost with the owner who has, for example, 18. Because you are in very different position, you have very different space to move down. And for example, uh, like about Pizza Hut. Pizza Hut can uh, they have pizza? Then they pack several pizza in combo, and this is first way to give thirty percent of discount. And then they sell it via aggregator, and it's like thirty five percent more even with discount. And after that, they still have thirty five percent of food costs. After discount, discount, discount. So and for sure, when your start level is thirty percent of food cost. So you will never win this race, you will never bargain, because it's quite hard. So uh, we wanted to share with you the idea of food cost management from Arena, like to, to be on the same page when you will start discussing the discounts, because everybody is, is in quite different position uh, of food cost control right now. Uh, okay, so... Uh, uh, yes, and by the way, Anna, uh, George, so 40 percent of food costs, to my mind, it was also from back to grills. So for sure, uh, I mean, may maybe first of all, you need to think about that, then move forward about discounts. Uh, okay, so uh, do we have any particular questions to Irina? I will try to read the chat right now and to find out. Um, I see one question. If I want to increase the menu prices of 15, 20% as mentioned, should I raise the price of the stars? Um, okay, so just to make sure that we understand each other, um, you increase the prices on, yeah, on 15% of the menu items, right? And do not raise the price more than 5 to 7% each time you raise the price. That's also a, a very important rule. Should you raise the price of the stars? If your stars are not a price sensitive um, 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 items, yes. If your stars are price sensitive items and those are the items that every other restaurant has it and it's something that people you know, judge when they make a decision then you should probably keep the price as it is but if this is the star that it's you know you are the only restaurant that is famous for this one thing and it sells super well and you know people are, are buying it from you because you're so good yes of course mm -hmm. people asking about the worksheet which i can plot my price and cost and shows which are stars and dogs so i think there are a lot of um, um okay do you do i have a sheet i'll 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 i'll, I'll check actually i do have uh, a lot of tables that i work with they're in russian so i will need to adapt but uh I'm not, i'll probably find something for you mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. yeah okay so uh, thank you irina uh thank you dear members let's move forward 